I am the law. I'm Steph. And I'm Ange. We're Nerdazons. Um, so that was my lovely, lovely intro. I am not as good at these as Steph is, um, and I always giggle when I do it, because <laughs> I feel like I sound silly. And I had to look away. I had to cover the screen for anyone listening, because I couldn't do it while she was looking at me. But if you don't know that quote, this fortnight is my choice, and I'm doing Judge Dredd vs. Dredd, and the reason I chose this is because I remember watching Judge Dredd as a kid. I always liked it. I hadn't seen it in years, and I thought, you know what? This is a great opportunity and reason for me to rewatch it, so I chose it, and I never saw the Dredd remake, so I thought it was a good one to go with. I'd never seen any of them, never never heard of them before. I was Now it makes sense when I go to cons and I see people dressed as Dredd. I'm like, oh, that's what you are. You're not a stormtrooper or you know ah it makes a bit of sense now yeah yeah i'm i'm definitely in that 80s 90s vibe action movie vibe lately so Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah no i'm really glad we got to redo it but i am prepared this time and i have the synopsis open so judge dread 1995 in a dystopian future joseph dread the most famous judge a police officer with instant field judiciary powers is convicted for a crime he did not commit and must face his murderous counterpart. Can I just say, all right, so um, I this is like the first paragraph that I wrote while watching this movie. I don't get it. This movie is so cheesy. And wait, are those are his real eyes? He's such a terrible <laughs> actor. Everyone is. That's what makes it so bad. It's good. Ha ha. Rob Schneider's in this. WTF. Okay. So the judge is everything, but there's still a court. His punishment is so bad. The graphics, the CGI is horrible, but the brothers look really cool. <laughs> I mean, you kind of sum it up. But no, when I first but watched this, I... Are these his real eyes? No, no. So Dredd and Rico, they both actually wear contact lenses. It's supposed to be like a symbolism that they are related or, or genetically related and mm-hmm. they're also not human like because their eyes don't look the same as everyone mm-hmm. else's. But yeah, no, they both wear contact lenses for their like their roles in this film. Ah, oh, and mm. yeah, I thought it was hilarious that Rob Schneider's in this film. He's so, he looks so young. He does look so yeah. young. Yeah, so this film, this film to me summarises your typical 90s action film. Oh, yeah. I love Demolition Man. Don't know if you... I've seen that one. <gasps> oh, my God, Steph. We are going to watch that. So it, it, it's your height of, like, 90s action film. Like, you had Robocop that came out. You had, as I mentioned, Demolition Man. You've got this um, one. True Lies. True Lies. Lies. One yes. of my... I'm going to say on record, this is one of my top five, top five movies of all time. I'm pretty sure you've said that on record. Yeah, already. I know. But I'm saying, I always say, this is my favourite movie, this is my favourite movie. No, that is one of my top five movies. It's definitely not on record. So, with this film, I really loved it. There was a lot of controversy with this film is because there were a lot of elements that weren't similar to the comic books. So, when I was reading up on this, because I'm not going to claim that I read the comic books... I don't know the comic books, I just know the films. But So the director at the time, Danny Cannon, he butt heads quite a bit with Sylvester Stallone. So Stallone was, had a vision that Judd, um, Dredd, it was meant to be slightly comical, similar to his uh, Demolition Man film. Mm-hmm. And, and the director at the time wanted it to be a more serious and dark movie like the comics. Mm -hmm. So Stallone eventually ended up winning with what he wanted to be in the film. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, another big thing is he takes his helmet off, and that is a really big point to a lot of fans of the comics. So he's not supposed to take – he never takes his helmet off, which is why – like Mando. Yeah, so he's supposed to be like Mando and not take his helmet off. But uh, when I was reading up on it, again, I was reading a bit for this film, is they – he wanted to show his face. Because he was like, you're not going to pay that much money and not show, you know, the main guy's face. So that changed the way this film was supposed to be done. It still did well, but um, a lot of hardcore fans are against it a little bit because it's not like the comic. Mm -hmm. To me, let's break it down. So I actually really like 
the cheesy 90s action side of it. Oh, that's um, the best. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought it was really good. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't, you know, like there wasn't enough. There was still quite a bit of action. Along with my readings, this movie had the dystopian future of Mega City the most accurate to the comic. I actually thought it looked really cool. It reminded me a lot of Fifth Element, which again, it was another futuristic, you know, cop movie that came out at that time. So they all have that same underlying theme, which is probably why they're all such good films. Um, the opening scene with the intro actually reminded me a lot of Blade Runner. Um, oh, yeah. Which again, another film at that time, because uh, that one was probably a bit earlier, but it just reminded me a lot of that intro mm-hmm. scene. You can tell that the graphics aren't good because it is the 90s but it's still it was a pretty amazing imagining and creation yeah. of yeah. a dystopian future but I do like seeing the similarities of that future to Blade Runner they both have like really high sky rise buildings they have mm-hmm. a lot of neon lights and a lot of obviously dark lewd activity on the lower streets like mm-hmm. on the bottom of the streets compared to if you were in the higher rise buildings yeah 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 it was just realistic you know i really and i i i loved at the beginning when they did like the star wars reading that was great and in a world back in, in 2050 it was just oh my god you know you knew as soon as you heard that voice that it was going to be super cheesy a lot of fun yeah and you know after having a long day at work and you just want something just to you know take your mind off you go to a 90s action film yeah you you can never go wrong with them no way fun fact do you (laughs) know who did the costume design for this one uh the same one that did little women i have no idea (laughs) you'll never guess this Gianni Versace. Wow. Yeah. So, like, they, this film had a lot of money behind it, I think, in comparison to its remake. And, yeah, so Gianni Versace did the actual costume design. Now, the costume design for this one is more accurate to the comic book design compared to its remake, which we'll discuss later, Dread. So the cheesy gold shoulder yeah. eagle pan he had, that's what he wears in the comics as well. So pretty cool hey like that's a pretty big name in the comics because this seems like it's such fun yeah so the comics aren't as as comedic as that as this film so be aware it is a dark comic from what i i mean not super dark but it is like um i've read the walking dead comics you'll be fine yeah (laughs) another really cool fact that i like about this film granted that you know we say that the cgi is not that great Mm -hmm. there are some things that weren't the same the prosthetics and stuff were awesome yeah and another really cool thing about this film Mm -hmm. which i find to me it really boosts the points up for this and it's just purely because this is what i like in films is to see Mm -hmm. people create no i'm not saying that cgi isn't creation but i mean this is actual building the robot the abc warriors the the big robot Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was an actual functioning robot that they had built and created for this film. no way yeah so i don't think i I mean i don't think you could say robot but i think it was a a, a movable machine that they had built purely for this film so it did move uh robotically Mm -hmm. for them enough for the film like Mm -hmm. pretty cool i think that's that's wicked and that thing was it looked awesome i loved that it had the big jaw line yeah that <laughs> and everything awesome i just i just love this movie but going back to what i wrote in my first paragraph i just thought it was a little bit dumb that they are judges themselves yet there's also a council i like it just i mean i guess plot ho- um there's a plot hole i mean it makes sense to me so what what their job is is they're out there they need yeah. if they see the crime they judge the crime yeah. And, yeah. and they they ship off and then you are either to jail or you know execution but mm. the council itself is there to keep the judges yeah. in line so it's really yeah. a council authority figure over yeah. them not the rest of the yeah I, I got that but I just thought you know it was a bit of a funny concept that you know and imagine being judged and just going you know what I'm I'm gonna be an asshole today and I'm just gonna you know what execution you know what I'm gonna let you slide yeah see like in the comics Judge Dredd has a reputation everyone including people on the streets they knew who he was and it was very obvious at the start of this film 
that he had that reputation when he turns yeah. up at the streets and they're like, oh, my God, that's dread. So I don't know. I, I kind of like that concept. You're, you know, on a business side of things, you're cutting costs at the same time as, you know, having one uniform authority figure. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, interesting like, on that side of things, but I, I understand what you're saying. Power. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to either. I feel like there's too much pressure. I would just be like, yeah, all right, you can go. Nah, don't feel like it today. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't want that. Mm -mm. Um, But how cool is the gun idea? I actually think it's really, really cool that in in a futuristic world that you lock your guns to your DNA. I know. And especially since that came out of a comic book and someone thought of that, you know, before the film could even be a concept. Like, again, I wouldn't want that power. I'd be like, what does this laser do? Oh, whoops. Or, you know, I'd find find it and go, I wonder what what it is. Put it on and end up killing myself. I'm that kind of person. Yeah. I would not be trusted with a lightsaber either. (laughs) I think that would be cooler than the gun. Yeah, no, I could not be trusted with that. I'd, I'd I'd chop off a limb before it even opened. Let's go back to... Judge Dredd. Mm-hmm. I really liked the element of the story where they went outside the walls and yes. that really whacked up Cannibal Family. Oh, <laughs> nah. But well, as you were saying earlier, prosthetics, how good did he look? The the son that had like a metal back, a metal spine, and he had the the son that, like, that was all nodding, just going. Yep. Yeah, I thought that looked incredible. Even if you look and pay close attention to, I was drawn to this his collarbone and i think you saw some of his ribs were actually metal as well so they that like they created that metal plating on him and then put like fake skin color flesh over it just to make it look real how could you do that to your own child people are effed up you know i know but and yeah i think that was i think them that scene was probably the most messed up part of it. And especially when they showed you, like, the other prisoners were roasting over the fire and you're like, oh, my God. Yum, yum. <laughs> but it was done really well. Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, and I got so annoyed with Rob Schneider. I keep saying dread and it's like, just shut up. You've already gotten him in trouble, like, three times by doing that. Why do you keep doing that? Stop calling him this. I can't He's believe so that dumb. I forgot about Rob Schneider. The only movie that I genuinely like Rob Schneider in is um Hot Chick. Uh, yeah, that wasn't bad. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, it was, that um, was pretty good. And I... Rob Schneider's great in that movie. And yeah. he, I guess this was one of his first roles, but I just feel like he, they, they tried to make him funny and witty, but it didn't come across. It just came across as him being annoying. There were moments where he, he was funny, and there were moments where I could see him on the serious side, but I just... I don't know. I feel a lot of his jokes got repetitive throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, especially the whole dread thing and him not keeping his mouth shut. And he, he did get a bit whiny towards the end. But I feel they could have developed his character a bit more. I, I know you saw his skills come into play when he, he deactivated the robot, but mm-hmm. I don't know. He, he, he Up until that point, he was just tagging along because he had to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It was a hit and a miss for some scenes with Rob Schneider for me. Yeah. Can we talk about how amazing Armand Asante was as Rico? Yes. He looked like he completely enjoyed himself whilst acting throughout that entire film. He really went down being the bad guy and just cutting loose and you know I feel like he truly did seem believable as a character that thought they were above the law and he came across like that he's like um I'm above the law I'm gonna kill you I don't care and he was just incredible and they looked so alike yeah yeah like I know Sylvester Stallone has a very distinctive face and especially this is before he went all (laughs) <laughs> um, but Although he did have like the side of the mouth talk, which Kai, I it's, I know it's not his fault, but it really just like I couldn't oh, take him. I feel like I, this is like Sylvester Stallone mm-hmm. in his like peak. peak. Yeah, even though they didn't look very similar, they looked believable to be brothers. Yeah, I knew what you meant. They don't look like you know identical twins, but you could tell that they looked yeah related. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and he looked like he had so much fun in that position. And whereas I don't know about whether or not Sylvester, like, he didn't seem to enjoy it. He didn't seem to not enjoy it. I don't know. I just feel like he was just playing a character. Well, this film came out after Demolition Man, and I feel like he is very similar to his role in that, including his sidekick Hershey, which was Diane Lane in this, very mm-hmm. similar to Sandra Bullock in Demolition Man. And Demolition Man, I checked, it came out in 93, so it was two years prior, and I feel like he really just carried a lot of that along with this film. I think you've given me uh, plans for the weekend. I'm going to watch Demolition Man. Oh, my God, I love that film. I've watched it, like, a hundred times. I've never seen Last Action Hero. <gasps> oh, my God. So I think I'm going to have a 90s action a thon this weekend. Yes, I think you need to go back and rewatch it all. Okay. Yes, I support yep. this 1,000%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, um, what do you next next good week. good 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 do you, you want to tell me how many movie reels you would give this one see i had a toss-up as to what i was going to rate both of them i didn't i both of them i didn't know well this one i'm just not going to mention about the other one this one i didn't know whether or not i liked it or i hated this movie because no. I didn't know if the acting was, like I said, so terrible it was so good or that it was just so terrible. So I'm going to give it a neutral 2.5. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I feel if you watch Demolition Man, you're going to see a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. I'm, that movie is epic. I love that film. Yeah, I'm going to stick with my 2.5. Okay, I also had the same thought process. I couldn't decide between the two, so I feel I'm going to have to give them the same score for different, like, they both have different pros and cons. Hashtag spoiler for the next uh, I know. movie reel. I'm so sorry. I still can't quite decide. I, th- I think I think my, my, I think my rating might change towards the end when we talk about them both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But for now, maybe I might. I'm going to hold my reading until the end because I know that cheetah, they're going to pumpkin eater. <laughs> I know they're going to be the same, but they both have different reasons why I'm reading it. So I think I'll give you the whole reading at the very end. I think <laughs> I think I'm going to agree with Ange. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a very different episode structure. Let's so take back both of our two point five. Oh, I didn't give it two point five. Ah, oh, okay, you did. Well, I was said. That that I had a score, but I wasn't quite sure yet. But I had the same thought process. I couldn't decide which was better. Ah. And I'll get into that. I think we'll wait until the end. Yeah. Yeah. Before we do move on to the end, how many, at what percentage do you think this one got on Rotten Tomatoes? Because it is a bit of a cult classic. Nerds like it. I'm going to go 64%. Oh, you got so close. Can I have one more try? You were so close. Uh, I'm going to give you one more guess, and it's lower. Oh, higher, sorry. 66. Oh, close. It was 68%. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's Mm -hmm. move on to Dread 2012. In a Mm -hmm. violent, futuristic city where the police have the authority to act as a judge, jury, and executioner, a cop teams with a trainee to take down a gang that deals the reality-altering drug slow-mo. Now, I hadn't seen this one. This was awesome. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> so, can, okay. So I'm just going to read what I wrote, and then I'm going to go on from there. Okay. <laughs> so to me, the first part was word for word. Then it went, then it went its own way. I, I think it took itself too seriously as a movie, whereas the first one was aware of what it was, an action movie. This movie was so bland, and what was with Carl Urban's voice? Wait, they're they're judges, but they don't have bulletproof vests? Oh, my God. We get it. She has to... uh, And then, yeah, I was not, like, yeah, I I don't know if I... uh, okay. All right. There's there's a point that I wanted to make that I had to wait until we got to this one mm-hmm. about the dystopian future. Now, it isn't like the comic. So we, we've already established that Judge Dredd did recreate how it was written in the comics and how it was created in the comics. And it did look like a futuristic future, you know, like Blade Runner, Fifth Element, um, not quite so much Demolition Man, but it looked like all of those. 
But I actually feel the future that they created, it looked more realistic in today's sense. If you think it was not like 100 years where we got flying cars and stuff, which which Judge Dredd had a few of those in the original, but I'm talking if you if, – if the economy started to shut down now mm-hmm. and, you know, money was gone or – Spoiler alert! But we're on oh, – yeah. But, like, if you think about it and, and you've got an overpopulated planet, the economy is shutting down, you've got those who are super rich and those who are super poor, I feel like it did represent what areas will start to look like run down where the money's not going into that part of the economy and things like that. It looked – believable in in like a slower turning sense into a dystopian future you know when you always see in some films where they're represented where it looks abandoned Mm -hmm. and all these empty derelict cars and buildings Mm -hmm. and and that's kind of where i feel like this that this mega city that they had portrayed looked like that in between stage before it's abandoned i'm gonna disagree Okay. And I'm going to say, so the first opening credits, when they were talking about what the world was and all that stuff, when they went over the first one, as I mentioned, it looked realistic. It was futuristic. Yeah, was, yeah. You know, all that. Whereas this one felt like it was just panning over a desert. It didn't well, feel like there was anything futuristic about don't it. Don't get me wrong. I actually think the judge... Uh, like the original Judge Dread, they nailed Mega City 1. So they definitely, definitely gets the point for um, creating the environment that, mm-hmm. that they're supposed to be in. I just think that people, if you look at it in a different view, it's not so bad. Like, I, I'm not saying that it was, it's not the best, because I definitely do think the original wins, but I just think that, that it's, it see uh, it can be believable in a way in a different view i guess but yeah i just as i could say in the first one i didn't know if this was a good movie or a bad movie that's the same as this one because i real like i judge dreads like carl urban's voice i did not like i don't know what was he putting on he was dreads. the better dread though like so if you were to no, break it down and you put Sylvester Stallone and Carl Urban, he is more accurate to the comic books than Sylvester Stallone was, minus the costume because he didn't have Versace. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the budget. But he is more to the comics. And I actually find this story a little bit better because when you read the comics, the comics is just he he's like the best judge. He just goes out there and it's different cases that he's against. And to this, it was just... It's like you had the whole story. It was you just come in, he knew what he had to do, he solved the crime, and he moved on. You know, it. I kind of preferred the storyline to this one than I did the original. No, I think I liked the original storyline because, I don't know, I just felt like it was... But, like, yes, they were doing the, the dreads and stuff, but it was, like, an awesome twist and turn that he was the brother. Like, again, I'd never Yeah, I don't know. I just like that this, the new one, was less of, like, going into dread and his life. Mm -hmm. And it was more about the action. I actually really freaking loved the action in this one. I did as well. And it was epic. I didn't realise how graphic they both were. Oh, my God. I had no idea how graphic this one was going to be. Like, in the first death, I was just like, whoa. And then my partner's like, oh, yeah, this one's more graphic. I I have to say that I liked the slow-mo shots as well. They were really cool. I did at first, and then I found that some of the shots were a bit too drawn long. Like when she's sitting in the bath and flicking the water, I get it that that was the purpose to try and introduce you of what the drug is doing because it's Mm -hmm. easier than having to just say what it does in a nice way. But I feel like sometimes certain shots were extended. But oh my god. Like when she jumps off the building and you're like, I get it. She's jumping off a building. Like looking at what's going cool. It's still going. Yeah, but it was cool. When you saw some of the <laughs> impact, really when she landed and it was yeah, like, oh. yeah, I thought that, that was, was really cool. But I but think that I think that it's a such long a, shot went too too long. I just it feel did. Like you did. It yeah. did. There were some of those slow mo shots that were too long, but it was cool. And I definitely think that that would be a scary yes. and horrible way to die. That was so creative to not only create this new fake false futuristic ju- uh, drug, but be like, hey, 
I'm going to throw you off 100 flights and you're going to feel like it's 250 flights of falling down because everything's going to go so slow for you. How horrible is that? that I know. That actually blew my mind when I when they captured the first two guys and I knew what was coming with the – and I, I really – sorry, I'm, I'm going on tangency, but I really loved the inhaler mm-hmm. like contraption as well. That was pretty cool. But I knew what they were going to do when he's like, shall we give him a hit before they go? And I'm like, oh, that's just mean. That's just horrible. Not only have you tortured them, but you're going to make, like, really draw their death out. Uh, I that, that was, was really creative. Yeah, that was a cool part of the storyline is the fact that that drug and how it all came along. And that's why, again, I'm going to repeat what I said, that the movies were literally word for word until it just split into, and then you found out about the drug and, and uh, Lena Hattie and, she was kind I don't know. She, she was, was cool. also confused. She was cool, but I think Rico was better. For villains, um, if I co- if you're going to have that as a category between the two, so Judge Dredd won set and it's going to win villains because Rico really got into his role. Mm-hmm. Lena Hattie was cool, but I just don't think the oomph was there as much as, For, yes, and, as and Rico. I, I didn't understand, like, she didn't come across, Everybody was scared of her and did what she said. I understand that she was the drug lord, but she didn't feel like she was powerful enough to take down all of these men, and I don't understand how she had them under her spell. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know how some people you're like, yeah, nah, you'll F me up if I do you wrong, whereas I don't feel like... Yeah. And and then I can't remember his name, the guy, the computer guy. I can't... Oh, yeah, that was um, Domal Gleeson. It was Domal Gleeson. yeah. Because yeah. I was like, is it Domal Gleeson? Yeah. He is it? Because, <laughs> wait, I don't think it is Domal Gleeson. It is. Yeah. Clan Tetchy. It was him. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Because <clears throat> I was like, that's Domal Gleeson, but is it not Domal Gleeson? I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, pretty, the makeup was pretty incredible on him. The graphics yeah. were awesome. The action was just 10 out of 10, blew the first one out of the water, I'd have to say. Carl Urban was more accurate to the character in the comics. Mm-hmm. I actually feel that in Dread, I feel like the colleague, um, so like his partner, the rookie, mm-hmm. I think that was a better storyline than having, you know, Hershey, um, you had Fargo, you had mm-hmm. Rob Schneider's character. I th- I feel that, you know, having a judge and a trainer and doing that one storyline, that run round, I actually felt the dynamic was better in that. Yeah, yeah, I think now And I'm, because in the comics, I, I, I'm pretty, again, I don't read the comics, but I'm pretty sure there are mutants in the comics. So mm-hmm. they brought that element in. I think that's also what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy the comics. Uh, because I am curious, because it's interesting that, yeah, um, Carl Urban never took his helmet off. Because he never does in the comic books. And that is probably the biggest debate between the two films. The reason why I was unsure with my mark on the two films is because there are things that I love about this new one, but there are also things that aren't as good that are better in the original. Yes. Which is why I can't decide if I like one more than the other. Because if I was in a classic action film mood, I'd go the original. But I actually feel the action was epic in this one, and I would re-watch the remake. But it just... It was just so hard for me to decide, and I really tried to work out what what movies had the better, you know, pinpoints. Also, just another point to the new one, Dredd's bike was epic. Yeah, but it just was like Batman, you know. I think that that was... When they read the Batman film. I I don't think that was as shocking because they had the same sort of bikes in, and I've seen in Batman movies, and you know what I mean? Whereas I've never seen a gun that, you know, was DNA, you know, twisted, and that was pretty cool. So with Um, the original one, fun fact on bikes, since we're talking about it, Mm -hmm. the bikes, the designs were built around, I think they said mopeds or other motorbikes, what I was reading. I'm sorry, I didn't retain all of that information. But they were saying that they were that heavy only stunt 
uh, workers on site were allowed to do the shots. So when you see her, she's sitting on it. It was a stationary bike. But if you ever see the bikes in movement, it was um, stunt uh, workers oh, because cool. the bikes were that heavy. Cool. See, this is why I can't decide whether or not I would um, – what I would rate them is because the first one, to me, I, I think it had a better production design – I think it, they had a bigger budget. Yeah. They oh, had cool. I think a budget of like ninety million dollars. That's ridiculous. And I think the the second one had I think like forty five million. Mm-hmm. Don't quote me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a big difference in that. You had a massive cast for the original. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, so if Stallone wasn't in that role, the original film would have come out a lot darker. I yeah. reckon it would have come out as dark as some of like you know the Schwarzenegger eighties nineties films. Some of his his action films were pretty dark, but the original director wanted to do this as a dark and gritty film yeah. like the comic books. So it's just interesting that with all these changes, that's what you got, the end product, and people still loved it. But then when someone has created this dark and gritty movie, you know, people are, like, are flopping between the two. They don't know which one's better or what. I just think there are each of them have done elements that are good and each of them have elements that are bad. And I feel they are both about the same. They're equivalent. Yes. That I would have. I feel that they have to both be done, marked at the same. And I agree. It really depends on the, the mood that you're in when you want to watch the film. The, I think the, the first movie would have been better. I mean, the second, sorry, the second movie would have been better if maybe Carl Urban just, you know, changed his voice because it really, like, irked me. I, it, it, it honestly it didn't bother me so at all. And I actually, one of the <laughs> biggest points that I really liked about Dread is, yeah, it just didn't have as much story into his life and his world and, <laughs> and, and that he was just this really tough judge figure. And, and you didn't, like, you just see him as this authority figure and he's fierce and he's tough and you didn't go further into it. And I feel like that really helps to... To make you fear him more but there, there is again a point in this film that I feel that they didn't accomplish that the original one did and that was how I told you that you know everyone knew his reputation mm-hmm. in the first one as soon as he comes yeah. out they're like that's dread whereas only the other police officers the crooked cops when they came into the building only they knew who it was and they're like I want the price in crew so I know who this is and I just feel his reputation wasn't shown as well in this film yeah. as it was the original yeah. but I, I, I actually I thought that was really cool to to show like the crooked cops and everything because like, when you think about it, it's a dystopian future people it looks run down people are literally fighting for food and stuff and cool. of course you're gonna like skimp off if you're a judge yeah i mean cops now, I they be... you wouldn't. there's a lot of people that obviously would but i mean if yeah. you're in a dystopian world and you're not you know not gonna say no to bribes of course you're gonna jump on the opportunity yeah you know? i think this is a really interesting episode because we kind of feel the same but slightly different yeah. about these movies but what I want to so you would so would I watch these movies again I think not for a very long time and I think only maybe once more I don't think it's a movie that I can go to either of them of something that I would want to put on uh, like on a you know Saturday night or whatever I think I'd more go to True Lies or um, Rambo you know something better than this right. See, that's where I'm a little different is because I would watch both of them again equally. I think they're both great. And again, as I was saying, it would depend on my mood if I'm looking for a classic action or a a more recent action film. But I I actually enjoyed both of them and I'd watch them both again. I don't think my opinions change. Oh, that's fair. I think I'm going to stick with 2.5. Okay. I'm going a 4 for both. Oh, wow. Not what I was expecting at all. I was tossing it between that or a 3.75, but I think I'll go four. I actually really enjoy both films, as I've mentioned. I feel the original, it's a classic. It's great. It's during peak 90s action films. And the prosthetics are amazing. I would watch it again because I like, I love seeing really good prosthetics. 
in like 80s and 90s films. I liked the, the the remake. I really, really loved the story of the remake. You know, it was a simple action film. You just get in, get out, and do your job. The action was great. The graphics were awesome. Like, it was definitely, it should have been more in that, you know, MA 15 plus rating compared to its original. So there are parts that I like about both, and there are parts that I hate about both. But, yeah, I, I thought a lot about this. I'm and, yeah. wondering why this didn't get more of a, a following or why it didn't get more of a this movie's out kind of thing. I'm a huge movie buff, and I love Carl Urban. I remember when it I came out. I liked him for a while, but I don't remember yeah. it out. I don't remember any of it. You I know? do remember when it came out. There's a, I just I, I try to look at the positives and negatives of both sides. There are positives and negatives of both sides. I think when I weigh it up, they're both about equal. They're d- very different points, but I think they're yeah. about equal. And I would watch both of them again multiple times. So to me, I, I feel that gets a four. I yeah. feel like it falls a lot, though. So. <laughs> oh, well, that's, you already looked in your answer. You can't take it back. That's fine. I, I'm happy with that. And so um, what do you think this one got on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to go less than the original. So I said 64 on that, and it was 68. So I... I'm going to say 58. Higher. Higher than the first one. I'm going to say yep. 89. Oh, not that close. It got 79%, which I feel this one, I actually feel the Rotten Tomatoes rankings are really quite close. Hmm, yeah. I'm, yeah, no, I'm sticking to my answer. Absolutely. 2.5. Yeah. But I now know, I, now I want to watch A True Lies and Last Action Hero and um, Demolition and, Man. And Demolition Man. Shall we move on? Nerdisons, Nerdy Notables. So last Friday, Steph came over to my place for a movie night for my birthday, and she got me my very first own D&D dice. I no longer have to use virtual dice. This is pretty exciting, um, and I absolutely love them. Thank you. And You're she welcome. also got me their green, which is my favorite color. Yeah. Um, and then she also got me the Stardust book because she's been telling me how much she loves it, and it is an upcoming episode. I was intending to find the audio book, but <laughs> looks like I'm reading it. Yay! I hope I hope you enjoyed it. I think I'm going to. As I really much like as I did. I think I will. I I really love Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I just don't yeah. read the books. <laughs> no, no. It's, I know it's an upcoming episode. I'm not going to say anything other than it's different. Yeah. Okay. I'm keen to, to read it, so I'll have to start reading that. And I'll have to find the book, the Terry Pratchett book of the December episode I want us to do. Yeah. So, yes. Anyway. So anyway, so she, tell but, everyone what the movie was that you made me watch. So I am so excited. I have been okay, trying. Before you do this. Yeah, she was like, I want you to watch this movie. I'm like, oh, maybe. I want you to watch this movie. You're coming over to watch this movie. I'm like, no, yeah, all right. Like, fire out. All right, I'll watch this movie. What's it about? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. Mm-hmm. And me thinking it was going to be, like, a super scary, like, <laughs> movie I, uh, and freak me out and be like, this is such a classic. Uh, I was like, oh, that's why I was kind of scared to to watch the movie with you because I always thought it was going to be a horror, like Hereditary, which I've never seen. No. Or the Nun so scares me. I like that film. No, so I have been trying for years to get Steph to watch this film. And then I finally used, you know, my birthday rights to decide the film yeah. um, and I made her and my partner watch Repo the Genetic Opera. It was and I freaking loved it. It's it, awesome. It is I, so underrated and this is why I needed you to watch it. I way home and was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I remember this bit of the movie. Yeah, so tell everybody about the movie. So the film is set in a futuristic um a dystopian future we seem to always pick those ones goes really with the theme of this episode uh so it's set in a dystopian future and your medical bills get so crazy that you just can't afford you know your simple surgeries and things like that but there's a a really rich businessman who created a company called um gene co 
and he will give you the body parts that you need. So if you need a heart transplant, he will provide that for you and you sign a waiver. But the essentially the repayments are so incredible that you're in this company's debt. And if you can't re- make your repayments, then a repo man will come and kill you and take the body parts back yeah. for the next person. So it is a bit yeah. – uh, I'm pretty sure there is a film – I think it was called Repo Man. And it, it does have a bit of elements to that, but it is a musical. So they do – sing through it but honestly i'm telling you it is that steampunky gothic musical that it you wouldn't even notice that you're watching a musical tell them who's in it and how terrible (laughs) their voice is (laughs) (laughs) no because then people won't want to watch it it's okay i i vouch this movie is incredible it's got an amazing cast so it's got minus this one person (laughs) no minus this one person so it's got giles from buffy yes it's got the chick out of i don't remember his name i'm just going to tell you what movies they're from so you got giles from buffy so giles is anthony head from Buffy. Uh, his Amy daughter Hed. is Alex Penavigo, who was the little girl from Spy Kids. Um, Spy Kids when she was a kid. So she plays Shiloh. There is an absolutely amazing opera singer that actually came into the film. So again, mm-hmm. it's that steampunky gothic vibe to it and she comes in and she actually does this like I don't know new age opera singing throughout oh. the film and she's got an incredible voice and her name to is Sarah me, Bright. That opera part is on par with the fifth element opera part. Oh I, absolutely 100 And that's another reason why you should watch it. Yes like this film the reason I wanted I needed someone to watch it. I watched it years ago when I worked in retail there was a girl who I regularly served and she had actually recommended the film to me i watched it and i my mind was blown and i've been trying to get someone to watch it for years and this film came out i think it was 2008 yep 2008 i think i watched it maybe 2010 Mm -hmm. And I've been trying since then to get someone to watch it. 11 years it's taken me to get a friend of mine to watch this film. I and the guy, the actual grave digger, um, grave (gasps) robber, he was amazing. He was so good. He, like, you were very focused on him. Whenever he'd sing, you would watch him. His voice was good. He was captivating. He acted with his entire body, his eyes, his hands. He just really stole the show. I found his name was T- Terence Zudnik. He was the grave robber. And then we will, I might as well tell you, <laughs> but Paris Hilton is in it. Um, she doesn't quite die like in House of Wax, but she does meet a gruesome end ish. And her singing is terrible, so please just get through that. <laughs> yes, oh my goodness. I have been telling everybody I know about this movie. I loved it. It is one of the best soundtracks. Yes. So anyway, that thank just, you. You're welcome. And I'm glad you enjoyed it because I was so worried. I was almost not going to show you this film because I'm like, happening? oh, it was going to be one of our movie choices um, for an episode. But I was, I, I just wanted us to enjoy a movie and not mm-hmm. analyze. And it's just. Yeah. It is such an underrated film. Agreed. In soundtrack and sets, I mean, the, the CGI is a bit, in, but obviously money. But, it but is set design gory? was incredible. The choreography was incredible. It was yes. gory, but not like ew, gory, but like <laughs> uh, I can tell you're being <laughs> Sorry, funny. Sorry, I'm just like gory. Ew, gory. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. It's just very underrated, and I highly recommend if anyone can get the chance to watch this film, please watch it, and then let me know what you think because. I love talking about this film, as you can see. Uh, Yeah, no, I'm, like, awesome. So should we tell them what we're doing next fortnight? So next month, it'll be, we'll tell you both options, but next month Steph has chosen The Parent Trap, 1961, I think. Excellent memory says. Yes, to the Lindsay Lohan, 1966. Yes, I think we're close-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and then my choice well, is... That, yeah. And then my choice is I've chosen an international film to a film that everyone would know, but the international film is called Infernal Affairs. It's a Hong Kong film, mm-hmm. and its remake is The Departed. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, we've got two very different options we've yeah. got another we've got an international film slash action film plus we've got a drama family movie family comedy yeah yeah 
<laughs> and a classic film. So there you go. Yes. So if you uh, want to email us, if you have any suggestions or that if you have seen Repo the Genetic Opera. Thank you. Then we'd love to hear from you at nerdazons at outlook.com. So you can listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts. Until then, stay nerdy. Thank you.